ألا شك لأن الله أعطى تفدلا وأن الذي أعطاه أعطوك مسجلا إن حديث الذوق فيه بشارة للرائين لمن للذائقين توسلا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد الشرف المرسلين وعلى صحبه أجمعين ومن اتبع لسنته إلى يوم الدين أما بعض فأقول لكم يا أيها الإخوة والأخوات السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليكم brothers and sisters I greet you with the greeting of Islam which is to say may the peace and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon you after that inshallah we ask Allah to send his blessings and his peace upon his messenger Muhammad ibn Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib al-Qurashi al-Hashimi al-Arabi uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send his blessings upon the companions of Muhammad and upon his family and upon all those who continue to follow his guidance and seek assistance through his sunnah until the day of judgment. Amma ba'd, now as to what proceeds, inshallah, we continue with our lessons um, in general, uh, but we specifically begin a book today uh, by Sheikh Abdurrahman al-Sa'adi. Others, they call him Sheikh Abdurrahman al-Sa'adi. He was the teacher of Sheikh al Uthaymin, who was one of the prominent Salafi teachers in the past, you know, 120 years. Uh, although we ourselves do not ascribe to this name of Salafiya or to a lot of the politics that's attached to it, nonetheless, Shaykh Abdul Rahman as Sa'adi was someone of ilm. And uh, in particular, this book of his with respect to the Qawaid al Fiqhiyya is something that is uh, extremely beneficial. Uh, al Qawaid is the plural of Qaida, Qaida meaning the principle of something, the base of something. Uh, the Qawaid of Fiqh are effectively those principles or those maxims. It's better to say the, the, the maxims to differentiate from the Usul al Fiqh. The science of Usul al Fiqh is a science whereby we take the processes of Istidlal, the process of deriving evidence, uh, where we take the rules that would allow you to derive multiple rulings or multiple benefits. Uh, from a particular text, uh, so you can determine the degree to which something should be considered as far as whether it's permissible or haram or recommended. Uh, the rules of usul al-fiqh also tell you what is the status of someone with respects to being a mujtahid, with respects to being a mufti, someone that's given a, fat, uh, a fatwa, and with respects to being a mustafti, meaning someone that is uh, seeking a fatwa. But the qawaid al-fiqh are the maxims. They are those statements that combine multiple principles from different furu from different branches of fiqh that are related within that one statement right for example if we say al umuru bi maqasidiha that affairs are according to their uh, their their intentions or their, what their what their benefits or what's sought from them al uh, the maqsid or the maqasid are the things that are sought from something right so that's a principle that allows us to consider multiple things right not just one particular issue. Whereas, for example, if you go into fiqh itself, the furu of fiqh, the, the, the branches of fiqh, meaning the actual uh, rulings and outputs of fiqh, you would have one is one mas'ala at a time. For example, okay, there's seven, uh, there's seven, uh, there's seven wajibats of, of wudu, for example. That's a single issue. There's seven sunan of, of wudu. That's another separate issue, right? But when you combine an entire maxim that brings together multiple rules into one short maxim, one short statement, and from there you can be able to apply it in different situations. Those are what's known as the qawaid al fiqhiya. So it differentiates from the furu al fiqh, the branches or the output of fiqh, what we know as fiqh itself, and the usul al fiqh, the principles of fiqh, whereby you're able to derive istidlal, where you're doing the reasoning process by which you take evidence and then you derive rulings. So qawaid, the qawaid of fiqh are, uh, they are a part of the usul al fiqh at a broad level because one of the one of the forms of istidlal is to derive rulings from the qawaid of fiqh. So effectively I say, okay, I have this situation. Uh, let's say it's a Muslim country and they want to determine, uh, you know, uh, the speed limit, right? The speed limit. So you have the speed limit, which brings together some benefits and it brings together some 
some hardship, some mafasid. So the Qawaiyad al fiqhia will tell you that, as Shaykh Abdul Rahman al will tell you later, when two, when, when, uh, uh, when a mafasid and a when, when a uh, mafsad and a, and a maslaha, when a benefit and, uh, and uh, an undesirable outcome meet, then what you should do is that you should put forward the deference of the undesirable outcome first before the occurrence of the desirable outcome. Ala kulli hal, these are what are known as the qawaid, the qawaid al-fiqhiya, the maxims of fiqh. You know, although it has a, a linguistic meaning where you can say the, the principles of fiqh, but it's different than the principles of fiqh. The qawaid al-fiqhiya are the legal maxims. You understand? Al-qawaid al-fiqhiya. So the fiqhiya is a description of al-qawaid. It's not the qawaid al-fiqhiya, it's al-qawaid al-fiqhiya. You understand? Meaning that uh, uh, the legal juristic, jur, juristic maxims, as opposed to usul al-fiqh, you understand, which is mudaf and mudaf ilayhi, which would be translated as the principles of a fiqh. So these are the the the, the fiqhiya describes qawaid here, al qawaid al fiqhiya. So the the the, uh, the juristic maxims, as opposed to usul al fiqh, which are the principles of a fiqh of jurisprudence. You understand? We'll get into the poem, inshallah. Uh, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. The Shaykh he says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Uh, there's not much of a need to get into Bismillah. We've said it multiple times. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He said that Kullu amrin dhu balin la yuftahu bi bi ismillah, fahuwa majzum. You understand? Wa fi hadithin he said Kullu amrin dhu balin la yubda'u bilhamdulillah wa bismillah, fahuwa Ajzam, or fahuwa abtar, or fahuwa akta, or fahuwa afsad. You understand? Or kama qala that every affair that's worthy of 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 being given importance that begins without the name of Allah subhanahu wa taala, that begins without the mention of Allah subhanahu wa taala, then that affair is cut off. So because of that reason, what do you do? What do you see? You see that the uh, scholars, whenever they write anything, whenever they begin any discord, they always they always put Bismillah rahman rahim Likewise, the Bismillah, you put it in, the, in front of anything, iqtida'an li qira'atil Qur'an, aw iqtida'an li kalamillahi ta'ala, aw iqtida'an li risalati Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that you are copying the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent his book, you are copying the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent uh, his speech, you are copying the way that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi when he would give you sermons or when he would write a letter, he would always begin it in the name of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So Shaykh Abdul Rahman al Si'idi, he begins by saying Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. He says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, all praises, all praises are to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. He says, Thu, it's as always saying, Thumma wa aftalu salati wa atamu taslim. He says, then the best of salah, the best of salawat. We said the salawat upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is asking Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala not only for mercy, because the mercy is general to the believers, but also ta'adhimu sha'nihi. Ka'anna tas'al Allah an ta'adhama sha'ni Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It says, though you're asking Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to increase the affair of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to increase his standing, to increase his sharf in every moment. وَأَتَمُّ التَّسْلِيمِ He says, and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the most complete taslim. Taslim is to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send his peace and his security upon the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, though you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, protect the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from every undesirable thing that could possibly occur. عَلَى سَيِّدِ الْمُرْسَلِينَ Upon the, uh, the Sayyid, the master of al-Mursaleen, of those who were sent with a message. We said that the Sayyid, the master of a people, is the one that is the most, uh, the most, mm, the most worthy of being followed. As an example, a Sayyid here does not mean an owner. When we translate it as master, Sayyid does not mean owner. Rather, Sayyid means the one who is most worthy of being followed. You understand? Whose example is worthy of being followed amongst the people? So the Sayyid of a, of a people, their master, is the one whose example they put forward. You understand? Their qudwa, the one whose footsteps they follow. Al Mursaleen, as we said before, the messengers, the difference between the messengers and the prophets are the, the messengers are those that are sent with a particular law. 
You understand? Or they are sent to revive a particular law. Whereas the prophets are sent with a particular shari without a without a new sharia. They are people that are given uh, wahi, revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not tell them, go to this group of people and call them to uh, a new law or a new book. So the messengers would be people like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Isa alayhi salatu wa sallam, Nuh alayhi salatu wa sallam, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa sallam. Even if they didn't come with a book, but they came with a message to a people. You understand? And then those are the messengers. And then the prophets are people that receive wahi. You understand? But they weren't sent to a, a, a people. So, for example, Ayyub would be considered a prophet. You understand? Now, he said, وَخَاتَمَ النَّبِيِّينَ أَوْ وَخَاتِبُ النَّبِيِّينَ Either way you put it, it's different verb forms. فَاعَلَى and فَاعِلُوا You understand? Uh, this is a refutation of those such as the Ahmadiyya who claim that there's a prophet after the Messenger of Allah Wasallam. Whereas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, خَاتَمَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَخَاتِمُ النَّبِيِّينَ He's the one that is the, the the absolute closer of 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 prophecy. There's no prophecy yet. Uh, there's no prophecy after him. You understand? Know Whether you look at it from fa'ala or fa'ilu, it both indicates closure. You understand? Know Sayyidina, our master Muhammad, Muhammad, the praiseworthy one, sallallahu alaihi was sallallahu alaihi. Once again, he says the the peace and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa taala be upon him, or the the blessings of Allah be upon him. Sallallahu. This is known as sirah to dua. So the Arabs, when they speak, when they would say "Sallallahu or Rahimallahu or Ghafrallahu or Hayakallahu," it comes in the in the past tense. It's a, it's as though you're saying uh, Allah had mercy on him, but it's just the form. It's just they're saying uh, "May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala bless him." May Allah have mercy on him. Uh, whatever the requisite du'a is, wa ala alihi and upon his family. Uh, the al there's an al of the sharia and there's an al of tarheem of of uh, of mercy you understand in ta'ammum the al of the sharia the family of the prophet of, of, of in the in the sharia is everyone that's related to him up to bani hashim these are the people that are not eligible for uh zakat these are the people in the case of jihad that receive khums you understand these are the al of the prophet sallallahu it's not just the descendants of the Sayyidina, Sayyidina, Sayyidina Ali and, and, uh, and his wife Sayyidina Fatima. It's everyone that's related to him up to his ancestor Hashim. Those are considered the Al. But the Al from the aspect of mercy is every believer is from the Al of the Messenger. So when we make dua, we're using the Al of Tarheem and Ta'amum, the Al of mercy and the Al of generality to include every believer of the, uh, uh, of the Prophet. وَصَحْبِهِ أَجْمَعِينَ uh, and all of his companions, the Sahaba of the Messenger وسلم, is anyone that met him in the light time of the Prophet وسلم, and believed in him and then died upon Islam. Even in, if in between that period they left Islam and then they came back. And then the use, uh, the use of the word Ajma'een is a refutation of the Rawafid, the Shia, because the, the Shia, they reject some of the companions and they believe in some of the companions. You understand? Woman uh, tabi'ahum and whoever follows them. بِإِحْسَانِ with goodness إِلَى يَوْمِ الدِّينِ until the day of uh, recompense, until the day of judgment. So this is an this is an illustration that those who follow the messenger and the companions they're not just limited to the first three generations. Those are the best generations, but there's people after them that are also worthy of being followed and benefited from. You understand? <laughs> he says the the person that uh, writes this text because people they come and they do itqan of these texts they fix them because sometimes there might be mistakes in the poetry. Uh, and so the person he says, يَقُولُ فَدِيلَةُ الشَّيْخُ الْعَلَّامَةُ عَبْدُ الرَّحْمَنِ إِبْنُ النَّاسِرِ أَسَّعَدِي رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى So the person is superimposing himself on this text, the muhaqqin or the, uh, the muhaqqiq, the person that's ensuring that the mistakes are not there, uh, the transcribal errors are not there. He says that the sheikh, the esteemed sheikh, the allama, the, the one who's an extremely knowledgeable one, the sign of knowledge, Abdul Rahman, the servant of the most merciful Abdurrahman ibn, ibn Nasir, the son of Nasir as Sa'idi, the one that's from that's, that's whose tribe is as Sa'd. Some they say as Sa'di, Rahimahullah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, have mercy upon him. So this is the Qawl al Muqawwil. It's as though when the Shaykh was ready to say what he wanted to say, or what he had completed saying what he wanted to say, he would have put Qala Fadi Qala. If it was written by him, this part of it, he wouldn't have said Fadila to Shaykh Al-Alam. And he would have just said, Qal al-Faqiru al-Mudirru li-Rahmati Rabbihi, something like that, Abdurrahman. 
something that's of humility. But when somebody else is writing him, then he put the words يقول فضيلة الشيخ العلامة عبد الرحمن because nobody would address themselves in that way. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said, uh, whoever uh, whoever humbles themselves and Allah will raise them. You understand? Now, so the Sheikh he says, Alhamdulillah al-Aliyyul Arf Alhamdulillah al-Aliyyul Arfaqi wa Jami'il wa Jami'il wa Jami'il Ashail Mufarraqi al-Arfaqu. He says, uh, all praises are to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala al-Ali, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, whose affair, whose attributes, whose actions, and whose essence is completely exalted from any comparison with anybody else. He says, Al Arfaqi, the one who is full of rifq, the most the one who has the most risk of anything that could be compared to. Uh, meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is exceedingly kind, he's exceedingly gentle, and he's exceedingly merciful to his creation. You understand? He says, What Jami'il Ashai, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's al Jami'il, or he's Jami'ul Ashai, he's the one that brings things together, whether it be concepts, whether it be people, whether it be thoughts, whether it be creation, whether it be a human being, he brings a human being together from sperm, he brings a human together from sperm and egg, he brings two people together, he brings people together, he brings things together, he brings events together. Wal Mufarriqi and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is also Al Mufarriq, he's the one that takes things apart. He brings peoples apart. He brings uh, a, a human being from his mother's stomach apart when they were one body. Uh, he takes a person away from this life. So he's Al Mufarraq. He's the one that also tears things apart whenever he wills. Th- so this is this is Tabdil. So it's as though Al Aliyu Al Arfaqi Jami Al Ashai Al Mufarraq and the other attributes that are coming is Alhamdulil Ali Alhamdulil Arfaq Alhamduli Jami Al Ashai. He's just given different names from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, different attributes for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as, uh, as well. He said, Then ni'amil wasiyat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all praises are, him, are to him that's the possessor of a blessing that is completely comprehensive and completely wide. Al ghazira, a blessing that's al ghazira, it's, it's uh, abundant like the rain. You understand? Wal hikamil bahiratil kathira. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's the possessor of wisdoms that are overwhelming that are awe-inspiring a type of wisdom that it would you know it would uh it would overtake you oh he's uh oh he's al he's well and he's the one that is the possessor of wisdoms that are not only abundant but they're awe inspiring i mean that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whatever he does it's full of wisdom meaning one one uh hukum of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one decision of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one qadir of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it can cause a million things to fall into place perfectly, like what you would call the butterfly effect. He said, ثُمَّ السَّلَاةُ مَعَ السَّلَامِ الدَّائِمِ عَلَى الرَّسُولِ الْقُرَشِيُّ الْخَاتِمِ He said, after that, I send blessings along with peace, meaning I invoke Allah SWT to send blessings and peace, دائم, blessings and peace that are forever, they're abundant, they never, they never stop. عَلَى الرَّسُولِ upon the messenger, الْقُرَشِيُّ that's قُرَشِيُّ that's from the tribe of Quraysh, Al Khatimi, that is the seal, meaning that he's the seal of prophecy. Wa alihi wa sahbihi al abrari, al haizi maratib al fakhari. He says, and upon his companions, excuse me, upon his family, wa sahbihi, and upon his uh, companions, al abrari, the completely righteous. Al haizi, those who collected and uh, and possessed maratib al fakhari, the positions of of uh, the positions of boast. Meaning they reach levels that a person would be able to boast and be, uh, and and say, you know, uh, Iqra kitaba, Iqra kitabi. You understand? Be, read my book. They reach levels that a person would have the right to do fakhr. Fakhr is to boast about something. You understand? If it's done in the context of vanity and self righteousness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like the, the, the fakhr. You understand? He says, I'lam, uh, hudita. He says, I'lam hudita anna fadl al munan. Ilmun yazilu shaka anka wa daran. He says, he says, e alam. He says, know this, my friend. Hudita, and he puts his dua, a dua in the uh, in in the middle of that. This is called jumlatul iradiya. So you take a jumla and you just put something in there uh, that it doesn't take away from the 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 sentence. But even if you removed it, the sentence would still be valid. You understand? He says, e alam. Know this, Hudita. May Allah guide you, my friend. An afdal al munan. That the best, most beneficial of blessings is what. Ilmun yazilu shakka anka wa daran is knowledge that removes doubt from you, 
anka that removes doubt from you what daran and removes filth from you meaning it's knowledge of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's knowledge of his attributes it's knowledge of how to worship him you understand because if you don't know these things uh even if you believe in him you'll have doubt the doubt will do taraddud it'll go back and forth in you and if you worship him improperly or you're misguided then you'll be doing things that will cause you to be spiritually and physically filthy you understand? You see people in the Hindu lands, for example, uh, when they want to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they cover themselves in feces. You know, this doesn't make any type of sense. He says, وَيَكْشِفُ الْحَقَّ لِذِي الْقُلُوبِ وَيُوصِلُ الْعَبْدَ إِلَى الْمَطْلُوبِ So he's continuing what the best type of knowledge is. It is it's the, the, the best type of, uh, excuse me, the best type of blessing. It's the knowledge that not only removes doubt from you, but also وَيَكْشِفُ الْحَقَّ لِذِي الْقُلُوبِ It's a type of knowledge that it removes the meaning it unveils the truth for people that have hearts you understand a person that has no heart meaning uh, a person that has no capacity to reflect even if you show him the truth plain as day it won't benefit him and it's the type of knowledge that takes a person uh, it, t it takes the slave of Allah subhanahu wa towards that which is desired from him from his lord you understand towards that which is sought from him from his lord he says, فَحَرِسْ عَلَىٰ فَحْمِقَ لِلْقَوَائِدِ جَامِعَةِ الْمَسَائِ لِلْشَوَارِدِ He says, so increase your desire, فَحَرِسْ meaning uh, covet, covet or increase in your, in, your, uh, in your aim, عَلَىٰ فَحْمِكَ to increase your knowledge لِلْقَوَائِدِ of these maximums. And he describes, what are, these, what are these maxims? How can we describe these maxims? جَامِعَةِ الْمَسَائِ لِلْشَوَارِدِ They're the ones that they combined al-masail, the various legal issues, al-shawarid, that are very slippery and easy to lose. That if you ask me right now, for example, what is the granddaughter of a person that dies and only has one daughter supposed to get, you know? I can't tell you. It's, 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 it's shadded. It's a slippery slope. But I have to go back into my books and look. But if you have a maxim that combines those things, then, you know, it makes it easier to remember. It makes it easier to apply in the, in the, in the requisite places. So the masail of fiqh, uh, are very slippery. They're very easy to forget because there's a lot of them. You understand? Now he says, and what's the, what does this do for you? He says, He said so that you can uh, so that you can rise by virtue of knowledge, murtaqa to the most lofty of positions, to the best of, of best of lofty positions. You understand? And that you can reach the path, meaning the ladders of ascension uh, or the paths of ascension of who? Of of the people that have been given tawfiq, meaning the people that have been given al gentle firdaus and that reach success. You understand? He says, He says, These qawaid. These maxims that I've put into a nazam for you, that I've put into a poem for you, or that I've collected for you, min kutbi ahlil ilmi qad hasaltuha. It's as though the meaning is flipped. It's as though you're saying qad hasaltuha min kutbi ahlil ilmi, that I obtained them from the books of the people of knowledge. So this is tawadi'un min al mu'allif. This is humility from the mu'allif, because he's min ahlil ilm as well. You understand? He says, Jazahumul mawla adimul ajri. He says, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them, meaning al-mawla, may their master reward them, azim al-ajid with the most tremendous reward, wal-afwa ma'ahu fraanihi wal-barri. He says, along with forgiveness, uh, excuse me, along with pardon. Pardon is that you forgive somebody without any type of recollection that it ever occurred. Ma'ahu fraanihi, with his excessive forgiveness as well. Walbarri and with goodness in the hereafter and in this life if they're still alive. Jazakumullah khayya ikhwan. We'll end it here. We ask Allah for tawfiq. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to be as we begin this book of Bismillah rahman rahim to end it with Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen to grant us tawfiq and barakah to grant us khair in this life and next life. Wa ma dalik Allah bi azizin na dalik Allah yasir subhanahu wa ta'ala bi azizin ya ma yasifun. Wa salamu ala al mursaleen. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Jazakumullah khayr. Wa nahnu ra'aynahu wa anta ra'aytana. وبذلك اطب نفسا وكن متجملا وان تشاء كن معجلا وان تشاء كن متعجلا